We're going to check in with our primetime team. First time this week, find out what they're working on for this evening. Michael Corrin starts us off. Superb show, superb. Uh, Ezra Levant will be on the show because we haven't had him on a, on the native issue, but he has pretty much dominated uh, the agenda about this. So we're going to have him on. Uh, Chris Sims is now on the show every Monday, uh, talking about a couple of issues about um, individual rights, really, both in Nova Scotia, where she is now, and also adoption, which is, a, uh, I think, will be a, a major story in the, in the next month to come. Moral Maze, every Monday, lots of issues to talk about, life, family, and, and morality. Uh, Laurie Goldstein will be on the show, and we're talking about how the police are becoming so political, have become so political. We've seen it over the native issue, where they really just spat on the law and say, we'll do what we want to do. But it's not just a native issue, it's also in, in other areas, how they really do... Uh, decide who they will arrest and they have this this new uh, approach where they'll say to someone I'm cautioning you which means the next time I speak to you, I'll arrest you mm. well who is some cop to decide that he doesn't like a statement made by someone I've seen people who have not broken the law but the cops want an easy time so they tend to let the left Islam those groups they get they get away with it because the, the cops know they'll cause a problem so they'll arrest the more law-abiding people so that and um, a thrusting monologue by me about the native issue. And, My goodness. Uh, I know. And it's interesting how the National Post even has referred to um, Chief Spence being on um, a, a liquid diet, not a hunger strike. So in other words, it's just a fitness routine, really. Unless the Prime Minister meets with me, I'm going on a fitness program. It's not much of a blackmail uh, approach, is it? Hmm. So, good show. Protein shakes, smoothies. She's probably fatter than when she started, and she was a heavy one at the beginning. I mean, I, I, you know, native people deserve our sympathy, but I'm sorry, lady, what, what are you actually doing? I mean, cutting down on your food intake, is, it, it doesn't make you Bobby Sands, does it? I'll be watching your thrusting episode of thrusting. the Marina tonight. That's awkward, thank you. Okay, mm. Charles Adler, standing by in Winnipeg. Thanks, Karen. On tonight's show, Toronto District School Board Education Director Chris Spence getting an education, taking them to school, and, and what happens when you plagiarize, you, uh, you get caught. But what role did the school board play in his blunders? How much intellectual honesty do they demand to begin with? The Menzoid, David Menzies, he's been trying to hunt for intellectual honesty at the TSB for a while, and he'll give us an update. Now, later on, more idle no more, believe it or not, this, despite the fact that Chief Teresa Spence got the chance to meet Prime Minister Stephen Harper and Governor General Johnston. Sadly, uh, she couldn't meet them at the same time, so she's continuing her refusal to eat solids. And the rank-and-file protesters are getting up to more mischief, planning an economic slowdown at Canada's very busiest border crossing, Windsor, Detroit. Sun News reporter Brigitte Pellerin will have the latest. All that and much more coming up tonight, right here. Charles, thank you so much for that. Marco Glassman is with me now. He's going to tell me what you're working on for Battleground. Yeah, well, you know what? We have a really great show coming up, Karen. Um, first of all, we're going to be talking about the race to replace Don McGuinty. Um, the, uh, just on the weekend, we had the Ontario Liberal Delegate Selection election. So um, basically, coming out of that, we see uh, Sandra Pupitello slightly leading Kathleen Wynne. But coming down the middle, coming out in third, we had uh, Gerard Kennedy. And he's going to be on the show today. To, and we're going to be asking him about that. We're going to be asking him about how, what he can do for the Liberal Party going forward in Ontario. Um, also, we're going to be talking about the federal Liberal leadership race. We have uh, huge news last night. Martin Cochon is, has, in the last minute, decided to enter the race. So, we, so we really are going to be talking about that. How can he impact this race? He's, he's another, he's another one from Quebec. They have several uh, new candidates from Quebec. So we're going to be talking about how that impacts the race. Does it change things? What does it mean for Justin Trudeau? All of that and much more coming up at six o'clock Eastern, three p.m. Pacific. On battleground. Appreciate it, Marco. Thank you. Okay, Blair, we got some uh, other places to go so follow me sorry sam we're gonna pass right by you here gibby is waiting for us robert gibson's Hi. gonna tell us what's coming up on byline tonight so last week brian and i started talking brian lilly the host of byline and we were like getting bored of this native protest story and the hunger strike which isn't a hunger strike and we thought we'd be putting it to bed today but um now they're threatening to block the ambassador bridge which i mean Maybe you label them terrorists if they do that, because that has some serious implications for the economy and your money and your job, probably. So the story's back in. We're going to talk about it. Uh, sometimes the best thing on the show is the video we show at the end. Tonight is no exception. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss America was asked, or sorry, a contestant for Miss America, Miss Iowa, was asked if uh, weed should be legalized. And her answer is just awesome. Oh, I didn't see it, so I'm excited oh, to wait, see that. So tune in, check it out. Um, Brian Lilly. He's ready to go. All right.
right. It can be a good kicker, as we call it in the news biz. That's right. Gibby, thank you. Thanks. Blair, a couple steps back. Watch your step. We're going to go this way. We got one last stop on our journey. She's waiting for us. Ricky Ratliff is going to tell us what's coming up on The Source tonight. I was just admiring our beautiful logo here, Karen, <laughs> um, in preparation for tonight's show. Um, we're, we're staying on the Aboriginal Affairs um, issue and beat. It's, it's one of the biggest stories in Canada, and it's one of the most important stories, I think, um, going forward in the year. Um, we've heard a lot about from the Idle No More movement about um, settlers and, and colonizers and using this sort of um, uh, hyperbole with, re with regards to um, our Prime Minister Harper as um, Hitler and there's a whole lot of um, inflammatory rhetoric taking place but is there any solutions? Are, are we having conversations going to move the Aboriginal Affairs issue forward, um, helping lift our First Nations people out of poverty, um, making them economically independent? Um, we're, no, thus far, we haven't seen any evidence of that. So what we're trying to do on the source is uh, introduce guests and introduce ideas that actually talk about solutions. So uh, for tonight's show, Ezra is also going to shine a light in his monologue on the new colonizers of the Indian people, our First Nations people. And he says they're radical environmentalists, and he'll tell you why tonight. As well, we'll speak with Ernie Cray. He's a former advisor to the Harper, or to the government on Aboriginal affairs. He's a current advisor to the Stolo Tribal Council in BC. He's also a residential school survivor. So he was ripped mm -hmm. from his home. Um, his sister was an alleged victim in the Picton trial. So this is an Aboriginal man who knows pain firsthand, and yet he has found success for himself and, and, and has found a way to reconcile with the colonizers. And we'll speak to him tonight about his thoughts on the I Don't Know More movement, if it uh, has teeth and if there's um, any solutions in this movement or if, if we need to be having new conversations. Um, as well, we'll speak with a student from the University of Ottawa. Um, it hasn't really come up in the news uh, too much lately, but uh, the, it, let me get this right, mm -hmm. the U of Ottawa Indigenous Students Association has issued demands for decolonizing and indigenizing the campus at, wow. at the University of Ottawa. They have five demands. We'll go through those demands tonight on the source. Uh, we invited them on the program, but uh, they've indicated that they're boycotting Sun News and they don't agree with our coverage, blah, 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 same old, same old. So we've invited a student who is willing to come on and, and speak up for the rights of other students who may not be comfortable with this whole idea of decolonizing and language like indigenous the campus so that's all coming up tonight on the source it is going to be a very busy one mm -hmm. thank you yes thank okay you, don't go away plenty more to come